What's good team and welcome to today's video where I'm going to share with you the ultimate roadmap that you should follow if you want to learn full stack development. It's an absolutely jam packed video in it we're going to first discuss a little bit about the full stack what it actually is. We'll also talk about how it works as well. Then we'll discuss what you need to know to actually get involved with the full stack, start developing full stack applications. After that, we'll talk about the fastest methods that you can use to learn full stack development so that you can start building your own stuff today. And last but not least, I'll share where you should go to learn it. What roadmaps in particular that have all the resources you need to learn full stack development. As always, if you enjoy the video, smash the like and subscribe button so that I can continue to feed Doug a healthy diet. So first on our list is to understand what the full stack actually is. And if you haven't heard of it before, basically it consists of two parts that come together to develop loads of applications. The two parts individually are the front end and the back end where we can start to understand each of them using the analogy of building a house. When we build a house, if we live in a house, for example, you use a tap, water comes out of the tap. If you plug a charger into a wall socket, you get electricity. Everything you experience is essentially the front end. So basically the front end is what a user interacts with on their computer. A front end is a website. The user directly interfaces with that thing and that makes it a front end thing. Now in the same analogy of building a house, the complement to everything that you experience in the house, all the work in water, is that there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes in the walls of the house. You've got all this plumbing work done, you've got wires and electricity everywhere. Now you don't directly touch those because that's how you get electrocuted or you get a massive leak. You don't touch those. Those are for someone else to deal with. You just get to experience the benefit of having running water and all that kind of stuff. So in summary, the front end is user interactive, anything that the user directly interacts with, and the back end is everything that goes on behind the scenes. Now there's a bit more to the full stack that we still have to cover, and the first thing on that list is the terms client side versus server side. So before in the analogy of the house, we were talking about the things that the user touches and the things that the user doesn't touch like the wires and the wall. Everything that the user touches, the front end basically, happens on what's known as the client side. Now the client side could well be the client's computer, the client is the user. If they load a website, all that heavy lifting, or at least most of it to display that website, happens on the user's computer. So the contrary, we have the term the server side. Now everything inside the walls, all the electricity, all the plumbing, everything that goes on behind the scenes happens on a server. And this could be a completely separate piece of machinery. It could even be a cloud server, something hosted in the cloud. It's just not the user's computer. And so we refer to that as server side. Now these are two separate entities and then they come together to form the full stack when we teach them how to communicate with one another. Now there's two primary means of communication that work together to create the full stack, the glue to join the front end and the back end. The first one is known as APIs. Now stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a whole lot of words that don't necessarily mean a lot to most people, but basically it's just the middleman. For example, if we think of a tap, you have to turn the tap on and that's what gives you water. The API could kind of be thought of as the little tappy twisty thing that makes the water come out. So that's a system of communicating between them where the actual communication structure is known as a network request. So to use them both in a sentence, we make network requests, which is basically sending signals across the universe. They interact with APIs or via APIs, and then we can communicate information and states between the client side and the server side at the front end and the back end, make them come together to form the full stack. So now we know a bit about the full stack, but what do you need to know if you actually want to build build a full stack. Well, let's start off talking about the front end first. Now, before we discussed that the front end is what the user interfaces with, it happens on the client side on their computer, at least for the most part, what do we need to know to build a front end? And the first thing, the unequivocal answer is JavaScript. You absolutely have to know JavaScript. 
Now, if you want a quick hour long tutorial to get you up and running with JavaScript, you don't need any prior experience. There is a link to one in the description down below. Be sure to check that out. But this will also be included in the roadmap that I tell you about at the end of the video that has resources for learning absolutely everything. Now, it's not just JavaScript that you need to know to build a front end. There's two other things that it often is combined with to create a package, a dynamic trio. And these are referred to as vanilla web development. And it's probably the most basic way to develop front ends also incredibly popular and very easy to get up and running with. And the two other choices are HTML, where HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it's basically a markup language you use to create the content for a website that a user can interact with. And the counterpart is CSS, where CSS is a styling language that then allows you to make that content, take it, and make it look absolutely beautiful for a user to interact with. Now you combine that with JavaScript. JavaScript comes together with the HTML and the CSS to make these pages interactive and dynamic. And then you have a front end that a user can interact with. Now those are the most basic choices and you'll see them at the start of the roadmap that I suggest later. However, that doesn't make them necessarily the best things to build front ends with. In the modern age, the most popular choice both in companies and for personal use, one is called React.js. Now React.js is a JavaScript framework that basically smushes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript together into a framework that makes it much faster to develop interactive websites. It's extremely popular, it's not so hard to learn, and it's included in the roadmap as you'd probably expect. Now my absolute favorite technology, if you want to really up your skills, is called Tailwind CSS, and it's just another way to style your web pages. I find it infinitely faster than using traditional CSS. I'd always recommend learning CSS first because Tailwind is built off of the original CSS, but if you can pick it up, it's absolutely brilliant to know. And with just React.js and Tailwind CSS, you can build crazy websites. It's unbelievable. So that's the front end. What do you need to know if you want to build a back end? Well, the cool thing about back ends is that most programming languages actually have the functionalities built in to allow you to build a back end. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and list every programming languages, but when I said that, some probably came to mind to you. And the answer is likely yes, you can build a back end in that programming language. Some of the most popular choices, number one on the list is JavaScript and Express.js, where JavaScript is the programming language and Express.js is a framework that helps you build backends really easily in JavaScript. Technically, you don't need Express.js, but it's a framework that's explicitly created to make it easier, so why wouldn't you use it? Another one, if you knew Python, the programming language, you could use Django. Another one is called Flask. Flask and Django are the frameworks. Python is the language. That's perfectly sufficient for building a backend. Lots of companies use that as their backend options. And another one is Ruby, Ruby being the language and Ruby on Rails being the backend framework that you can use to develop servers, etc. Now this obviously isn't an exhaustive list. There are loads of options out there. All of them are absolutely brilliant. You just wanna pick the one that's gonna be the easiest for you. And if you don't know much or you're not sure where to start, I personally would recommend JavaScript and Express.js because if you recall back to our front end, you'll remember that we can also use JavaScript to build front ends. So it really just saves you having to learn a whole lot of languages to build both different sides. Instead, you can use JavaScript to develop both of them. So now we know what we need to know to build out a front end and a back end to create a full stack application. What's the fastest method that we can use to actually learn these skills and start building building our own applications. Number one on the list that I would absolutely recommend is project-based learning. None of this sitting there writing out rote learning, that doesn't work. I don't like that strategy for learning to code. If it works for you, then fair enough, totally viable, but I much prefer project-based learning. That's personally how I learned. Now, if you're not sure what project-based learning is, Basically, you start off following a YouTube tutorial, for example, the ones that will be listed in the roadmap that I share with you shortly. And essentially what that learning environment looks like is that you build a code base together with an instructor in a video. You get to the end of the video and you have developed an awesome application. It's taught you all the core concepts and best practices for developing applications using that technology. Now, if you really want the cherry on the cake for that process, the first thing I'd recommend adding to it is if you're not a lazy bum, you annotate the code base with comments. So basically whenever the tutor says something super interesting or you like the way they frame something or you feel you might forget it, 
leave a comment in the code base as a reminder. It's a super beneficial practice to help you further understand what's going on in this new code base. The second part to this process is once you've finished the tutorial, you now have to adapt that code base into your own project. Most code bases can be modified. You might just change a text size. You might change a functionality. You might change the whole application, but keep some core structures in place from the tutorial. Start off making a 1% change and then these spiral out of control until it's a 95% change. And that's going to make the learning process really gradual from learning from a resource like a tutorial to being able to code your own applications very independently. When it comes to making your own projects, simple projects are best. You don't have to go and build Facebook to prove that you've learned how to develop your own applications using a programming language. Simple is best. Often something like a simple to-do list is perfect because you can can still demonstrate all the core concepts and building a to-do list, but the project itself isn't that monumental, which means you're more likely to get to the end, finish it and feel that dopamine hit, that satisfaction of completing something and feeling your understanding growing. Now, the other thing that's essential if you want to learn quickly is to not spread yourself too thin by trying to do six things at once. I see this a lot with people learning to code. They'll come to me and they'll say, all right, I'm doing these six different roadmaps at the same time. You know, I'm trying to do everything. It's just way too much. It's very overwhelming in my personal opinion. You're much better to stick with one, focus on it, pretend there's nothing else around it until you either get to the end of it or you decide it doesn't work for you and then pick a different one and then proceed with that. That way on any one day, you're just focusing on one objective and you're much more likely to complete it and feel that sense of progress than trying to do six different things at the same time, all at the same level, and then you get to the end of them, you might be feeling overwhelmed and you might feel like you haven't made much progress at all, which can be quite demotivating. So if you do all of that, you should learn, pick up the technology in no time and you'll be building your own applications ASAP. Now the last thing on the list is where can you go to get all the resources you would ever want to learn all this material and be a full stack development pro in absolutely no time? And the answer is the roadmap. If you haven't already come across it before, basically you just want to head over to www.smalljames.com roadmap. It covers absolutely everything. If we take a quick look, you can see there's a guide overview, some resources that might help you get started. We've got six different chapters you can progress through. Chapter one is all the beginner information and you can just complete these resources one at a time. They jump directly into the next one. It's very natural progression and it's everything I wish I had when I was learning to code. You can see all the different chapters. You'll build loads of cool projects. It covers everything and you can build crazy applications with just the knowledge inside of this roadmap. So be sure to check it out, www.smalljames.com slash roadmap. Link will be in the description down below. And as always, if you have enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.